She called me last the night before our wedding. She was a little hysterical. She said she had to see me right away. I said I couldn't see her, that I wouldn't. Then I got to worrying. I thought I'd better go. Finally, I took her for a long drive up the Hudson. We talked and talked until morning. Just at dawn, we stopped and watched the sun come up from the Palisades. She told me she loved me over and over again. She was crying a little. I was confused and bewildered. And having her so near, well, I lost my head. I'm not asking you to forgive me, Mary. But I had to tell you the truth. Well, your truth comes a little late, doesn't it? Jeff. You lost your head, huh? Getting married's a pretty deliberate action. Jeff, this is my affair. Take it easy, Jeff. We did get married. Then for the first time, I realized what I'd done. We left the Justice of the Peace office, and it seemed to me like I was just coming out of a dream. I left her. You left her? Then? Yes, in the car. I took the train. I was crazy, Mary. You left her. Then? Mary, you do believe me, don't you? Say you do. Please. I can't spend another night like last night. You can't. What about her? Never mind about me. Never mind you. Good Lord, Mary, there's a limit. Yes, and there's a limit to what I can stand. He's sorry, isn't he? You heard him say that. Oh, yes, I well, know. Well, that's it. enough. I don't care what he's done. I love him, do you hear? And he loves me. I do, Mary. Believe me. he did let me down? I'm sorry, Mary. Oh, I'm sorry, too. I love you, dear. I love you. Oh, Mary. Well, that's that. Shep, may I have the honor of this dance? Pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We have finished the second act of Forsaking All Others. Betty Davis and Joel McRae return to us in Forsaking All Others. One month has passed, and Dylan Todd is in Mexico to free himself from Connie. Jeff, always the good friend, has gone along to keep him company and stands by the window of their hotel room, looking across the little town. Well, tomorrow's the day. Hey, Jeff. Hmm? I said tomorrow's the day. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Are you sure? That lawyer said positively. Final papers and everything. Lord, I'll be glad to get out of here. Why, it's not such a bad place. What are you talking about? You've been beefing about it for a month. Now we're going home, you suddenly take a liking to it. Just the same, we're catching that train tomorrow afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what, dear. Would you mind very much if you went alone? I think I'd like to stay on here for a while. What for? Well, just for a few weeks, I think I'd like it. You're crazy. Why, if you stay... You won't even make the wedding. Mary would kill you. No, I'll make it all right. You'd better. You're still best man, you know. No, I don't know. You know. I thought maybe you'd pick Shep. What's the matter? Don't you want to be best man? Well, if it's all the same to you, Dill, I think everything ought to be, uh, well, different. Do you mind? No. No, of course not. I guess I know what you mean. It will be different, too. Sure it will. Well, I think I'll shoot an airmail to Mary. Shall I give her your love? Hmm? Oh, yes, do that, will you? Hello, Dent. Mr. Tingle. Welcome back, sir. Thanks. Am I expected? Oh, yes, sir. I heard Mr. Todd say you'd probably be here today. Jeff! Hello, Mary. Jeff, you finally got here. I was ready to kill you. Do you know I'm getting married tomorrow? <laughs> Same place, same piano, same crowd, same wedding. Same Jeff. <laughs> it's good to be back. Come on, I want to speak to you. Now tell me all about yourself. No, there's nothing much to tell. How was Mexico? How are you? Feeble. Let me look at you. Jeff, you're thin. No, I got too much sleep down there. Well, you didn't dare sleep before you reported here. No, I tried to, but I couldn't, so I leapt out of bed and fixed myself up cute and rushed right over. Oh, you did. Well, you can go right back home again. Oh, I... I got your wretched little postcard. Did I send you a postcard? Just too sweet for words. Where is it? Oh, yes. Yes, here it is. A whole month away in one postcard. At least I had the sense not to write to you. Oh, I read your letter to Dill. It's good the judge didn't know he was getting letters from a giddy young girl. 
Is that my postcard you're tearing up? The pretty picture of the lake? That's what I think of your pretty picture? Well, at least you waited until I got here. Just for the stamp. Oh, well, I've got something to tear up, too. What's that? Your last letter to Dill. He gave it to me for my stamp collection. Too bad I hadn't read it yet. Jefferson Tingle, I ought to slap your insufferable face. Well, you better not. I've been down in a country where a slap in the face means business. Say, where's Dill? Oh, he's around. We're both trying not to look self-conscious, so we steer clear of each other in front of company. Oh, it's good to see you, Jeff. It makes me feel good. Dr. Tingle, at your service. How are you, really? Feeble, Moth Tingle, feeble. I don't believe it. What'd you do while I was away? Well, I... I caught up with my classical reading. I went shopping and didn't buy anything. Shep and I tore up the town. We became famous far and wide. That pale, interesting woman and that very young-looking boy. <laughs> Is he the best man? Yes. Too bad I won't be here. What? Well, now, don't yell. I've got to eat. I've got a job, and the boss suggests I work at it a bit now and then. He's sending me out of town tonight. We'll delay the wedding. Oh, I'm flattered, but you won't. Oh, but I won't see married unless you're there. Oh, I'm a jinx. If I stay away, everything will go all right. Will it? I wonder. What's the matter? Are you good at diagnosis, Dr. Tingle? Very. What are your symptoms? A sort of unsatisfactory few weeks I've had. I've straightened out every dresser drawer and every closet in this house. I don't suppose that means anything to you, does it? Oh, certainly you're a neat woman. Go on. You probably counted the linen, too. Oh, a lot of the good old stuff Mother had was mildewed. I was so mad I cried. And then one rainy day up in the attic? You'd be mortified to know that I did spend such an afternoon. I sat in the middle of my ancestral trunks and balls. Oh, what over? I just told you. Over the fact that life was far from satisfactory. Didn't you feel better afterward? No. Well, what's the sticker, Mary? Whether or not I should marry Dill. What? Well, have you said anything to Dill? No, what is the two saying? Well, I've made up my mind one way or another. Well, you haven't much time, less than 24 hours. Make up your mind, either you are or you aren't. You ought to know. Yes, Papa. Say, are you one of these women who worry themselves into a fever trying to decide between pink and green? Haven't you got enough strength of character to know what it is you want and ask for it for a loud, clear voice? A loud, clear voice. That's easy to say. Because you know what to ask for and I don't. That's the difference, Jefferson. Your life seems very simple to me. Well, that's because I'm a very complex person. I see more than floats on the surface. I've practiced holding my breath for three minutes and walking around on the bottom with my eyes open. And you can do it, too. I've always considered you a person who knew the passwords. I've watched you out of the corner of my eye. You're shocked by the right things, stupidity and glitter and cheap sophistication. But this marriage business has you all mixed up. One of your little pet illusions cracked up about a month ago, and it's got you down. Well, you've got to patch it up again. You've got to keep your pet illusions, and you've got to make them shatterproof. Wait till I get my copybook, and I'll write all this down. No, no. Either you know it or you don't. You don't get it by writing it down, and you don't get it out of books either. Then how is a poor girl to get it? Listen, you know what I'm talking about, and if you didn't, you wouldn't be trying to joke about it. You'd be cussing me out because you'd think I was saying you weren't sophisticated. And in this day and age, to say that to a person is to insult him to his non-existent soul. Well, I know the truly wise are simple. But it doesn't necessarily follow that the simple are truly wise. You're not being simple now. You've got to make up your mind. Do you want Dill or don't you? I told you I don't know. Mary, what is this? You're not trying to get even with Dill. I thought you knew me better than that. Oh, I do. You're above that. Thanks. If I weren't and I found out that I didn't love him, the best way to get even would be to marry him, wouldn't it? No, but you wouldn't do that. Of course I wouldn't. Mary, I... I don't know what this is all about. Neither do I. I told you I didn't. Well, have you spoken to anyone else? Oh, I couldn't. Still, I... I can speak about it to you. It's funny, isn't it? Well, we... Well, we're old friends. Oh, that must be it. Well... Well? What's your problem, Mary? And it's a big one. You haven't much time to decide. The minister's coming in a few minutes to make the final arrangement. Well, whatever you do decide, it'll be right. I know that. Thank you, Jeff. Goodbye, Mary. Bye. 